да, все так и горит, но она не тушит, не могут потушить. Да, там машины все останавливаются, смотрят, офигеть. Не знаю, она горит, смотрите, видите, как подписчики? Они тушат, не знаю, прям копать такая идет. Ой-ой-ой, что творится. И там вот дальше маленькая там. Копать горит, ух. Дай бог, чтобы пожарники потушили. Дай бог, пожарник, пожалуйста. Пожалуйста, боженька, дай бог, чтобы потушить. Потушат. Офигеть, он как горит. Ой-ой-ой, как горит. Бедная нефтебаза. Да. А это, мои друзья, онлайн видел лично от меня. Я подъезжаю сюда. Вот так вот. The tactics used by the Russian army to capture the Ukrainian city of New York were reminiscent of Stalingrad, one of the bloodiest battles of World War II, the Wall Street Journal reports. The soldiers marched in groups of three, moving swiftly down the street, guided by a drone. When Ukrainian defenders opened fire, the survivors hid in a house. They continued to advance in waves, taking heavy losses until about a dozen Russian infantrymen had gathered in one place. Then they began the process again, the report notes. Their commanders show them no mercy, said a Ukrainian company commander known as Vodole, who led troops fighting in the city. During one operation in New York in August, Vodole's well-equipped men repelled the Russian onslaught with swift and decisive action. Vodole's unit, the 425th Separate Assault Battalion, was called into action this summer after Russian forces advanced in New York City as part of their efforts to seize a strategic ridge in the northeast. In August, the Russians were said to be advancing steadily through the town, using the grain elevator as a logistical hub. One Russian soldier captured in nearby Toretsk described the tactics they used relying on mass rather than skill. The 31-year-old private surrendered, he said in an interview the following day, after two others in his assault team were killed, one by the Ukrainians and the other by his own hand, he said. There is no morale. Everyone is afraid. The commanders say, faster, faster, faster. Under relentless pressure from behind, he said, they advanced relentlessly. Several Russians hunkered down in the basements of a fire station and a New York agricultural chemical supplier when Vodolay's men counterattacked. The 33-year-old, a native of occupied Mariupol, dispatched a group of 12 soldiers equipped with night vision goggles in a US-supplied Bradley infantry fighting vehicle. They dismounted and then a lieutenant, watching a feed from a thermal imaging drone, led two groups of six down parallel streets. Night is our great advantage, said Aquarius. They threw smoke and fragmentation grenades into the basements and then stormed in, killing any Russians who did not escape. By dawn, they had reached a crossroads north of the grain elevator and helped another Ukrainian unit take up defensive positions in the buildings. The next target was the grain elevator, which the Russians were using as a staging area for further advancement. The Ukrainians went around the back of the building, taking up defensive positions to prevent reinforcements. The main assault force of six men attempted to enter through the door on the eastern side, but it was barricaded from the inside. So they broke through the main entrance on the western side, but were repelled by machine gun fire. The Ukrainians expected to encounter the handful of Russians they had seen in drone footage entering the grain elevator, but it became clear they were outnumbered. When one soldier was wounded by shrapnel, the group retreated into a nearby building. Over the next day, the Ukrainians bombarded the elevator with artillery shells and explosives dropped from a drone, but to little effect. It is noted that the Russians had the advantage in height, but they were trapped. The Ukrainian assault group captured the radio station and heard commanders telling their men in the building to hold and wait for help. Vodole told the commander of the Ukrainian assault group, tell them they are being lied to and there will be no help. 